take your Bibles tonight and turn with me to the book of Exodus, uh, Exodus chapter 8, and uh, we're going to read uh, 20 through 23, Exodus chapter 8, verses 20 through 23, when you find that in your Bible, if you'll stand as we honor the reading of God's Word, Exodus 8, starting in 20, if you have that. Say amen. amen. Starting in verse 20. And really this is our text verse for the night. But I'm going to read through 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning. Notice he didn't say wake up at noon. And stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water. And say unto him, Thus hath the Lord said, Let my people go, that they may serve me. Else if thou wilt not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, and into thy houses. And the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies, and also the ground whereon they are. And I will sever in that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there, to the end that thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. And watch this. I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow this sign be. Shall this be. Amen. Father, thank you for your word. And Lord, I pray that you would uh, help me to, uh, uh, to give this truth as you gave it to me tonight, Lord. I pray that nothing would uh, proceed out of my mouth tonight that is not of you, Lord. And I... Pray that you would help us to every time that we open your word and read your word, Lord, that you would uh, speak to us in some way, Lord. I pray that, uh, uh, that it's only through the reading of your word and the application of your word to our lives that one can be changed, Lord. So I pray that you would uh, allow each of us to, to remember that when we open this book and read it, Lord. This, is, this book is alive and, it, and it's, it's able to change, and Lord, I, I pray that you would help us tonight, and allow us to walk out of here a little different than we walked in. In Jesus' name, amen.
We were in heaven, and I was reading the story for a, a few chapters. Moses and uh, y'all, who, who remembers y'all ever hear that in on the bus? They attention to what you're reading here, uh, you'll see that God had a great and specific purpose for letting His people go. Uh, nine times over the span of three chapters, God says to Moses, Moses, I want you to go down there to Pharaoh early in the morning. Early in the morning, I want you to get up. I want you to go down to Pharaoh. And I want you to tell him, let my people go. Now notice, he didn't say, let my people go so that I can take them over to the promised land and I can bless them. He didn't say, let my people go so that they can go uh, wander the wilderness. He said, let my people go so that they may serve me. So the whole purpose of their release was so that they could go serve God. God's great desire has always been that he wants a people that will love him and serve him with their whole heart. The, uh, the young uh, fellow that asked Jesus, uh, and he kind of did it in a, a, a smart alecky way, but he said, Master or teacher, uh, what is the greatest commandment? And what, what, what did he tell him? He said that thou love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy mind. And all thy soul. And if you love the, God, the Lord your God with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul, you won't have a problem serving Him. After all, what do you think heaven is going to be about? <laughs> what do you really, what do you think heaven is going to be about? Uh, I, let, let's, I don't know if y'all ever read the last book, in, the last, uh, book of, of the Bible, but in Reve I'm going to read two verses from you about heaven. And in Revelation chapter 7, verse 15, the Bible says this. It says, Therefore are they before the throne of God. Who? Us. Therefore uh, are they uh, before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. So I don't know what your idea of heaven is. I, uh, I don't know if you think it's just going to be watching TV all day or, or what, but, but, but if it's going to be serving Him. Look at Revelation chapter 22 and verse 3. Now this is the new heavens and the new earth. There's going to be a new earth, by the way. The new heavens and the new earth. And in verse 3 it says, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and His servants shall what? Serve Him. Guys, heaven's going to be all about serving God. So you might as well get used to, it while, used to it while you're here. Serving God is your purpose, okay? Uh, now, I am not a, a Calvinist, but, uh, but God predestined us to serve Him, okay? He knew before the foundation of the world that you and I and whoever would be saved, would, we, would, His intention for us was to serve Him. 
Notice he didn't say, let my people go so they could be blessed and highly favored and live a carefree life uh, 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 that's all about them. Uh, no, he didn't say that. He said, let my people go that they may serve me. Look, man, God's desire, and uh, this, I guess, will be number one. God's, God's great desire has not changed today. Everything God has provided for the believer is so that they will serve him. Okay, uh, look, God has given us wives, and, and wives, they've given you husbands so that you can serve him as a family. God has given us a uniqueness. Everybody in here is different than, than, than the person sitting next to them, okay? Some of you are way different. Uh, but uh, God has given you that uniqueness so that you can serve Him with that uniqueness that you have in you. God, look, God blesses us with all spiritual blessings, okay, that you may serve Him. Your talents are blessings. They're, they're, but everybody in here is good at something. And whatever it is that you're good at, you ought to use that to serve God with. I remember back in the day, my buddies would say, Man, Tony, you got the gift of gab. You could talk Eskimos out of ice cube. And look, I didn't know that my, later on in the future, I was going to use my gift of gab to gab the gospel. Amen? But that's what my, my, if that's my, my talent, then I'm going to use it to serve the Lord. Everybody in here is good at something. Juan, he's a heck of a mechanic. So is Cos. They use that to serve the Lord with. Boy, these buses around here sure need it. <laughs> Uh, everybody, uh, Miss Mars, where'd she go? Boom, right there. She's good at uh, playing, whatever, what is that, a cello, bass? Yeah, she's good at that. And she's using that for serving the Lord. You get my drift? See where I'm going with that? Every, everybody in here has some kind of talent, maybe except for Fred. But everybody, everybody, everybody has a talent. Fred's got a lot of talent. But every, everybody's got a, a talent that they could be using to serve the Lord with. He gave us His Word to show us how to live and to show us how to serve Him. He's given us example after example after example of men and women in the Bible that served Him that we can take and apply to our life and, and serve, serve Him in the same way. And look, there's blessings that came behind that service. And the Bible says uh, uh, all the promises of God are yes and amen. And the same promises are the same blessings that they got. We can get the same blessings, man, if we just apply the same thing that they did to our life and use our talents and use what it, whatever it is that God gave us to serve the Lord with because that's all they did. They served the Lord in obedience and in truth. And that's what we ought to be doing. He gives us a way to come to Him with our needs in prayer uh, so that we may serve Him. Our problem is we ask amiss. We ask selfishly all, or we only ask when we're in a jam. God, God gave us, gave us uh, the, the power of prayer so that we could effectively serve him better. Man, when I'm setting up that gym over there, I go and pray over every chair. Every chair. Lord, I don't know who's going to be here uh, uh, Sunday, but you do. And some of the chairs, like I know who's going to sit there. So I pray over that exact time, know who's going to sit there. So I'm like, uh, there's this, this guy named Tony that always sits in the front. And, and the, uh, another regular sits right behind him. So I'll pray over those two chairs specifically in their lives. Because I know they're going to be in the same spot next Sunday. Right? And, and, and so, so, so uh, and I'll pray for the ones that, that, don't, that I don't know is coming. Who, who may, may need to be saved. Right? So, so, so God gives us this power of prayer to you. I pray for the uh, tracks that we go pass out. Lord, let this, uh, we know your word does not return void. Let, let, let somebody find this track and, or let somebody open their door and get this track and let them come to church and get saved. Uh, pray for the opportunity, like I told my Sunday school class this morning, pray for the opportunity to lead somebody to Christ. And if you ain't leading somebody to Christ, man, you, you, you got you to get, get with the program. It, it ain't that hard. It, it's written down on the, on the track for you. All you got to do is memorize a few verses. And, I mean, you can literally take the back of the track and go word for word. I mean, it's, there's no excuse, really. The whole purpose of God giving the children of Israel their liberty from bondage was to serve Him. Watch this. The whole purpose of Christ giving you and I our liberty from, the, uh, from sin and uh, the curse that comes with it is so that we can serve Him. They got their liberty so that they could serve Him, and now we have our liberty to serve Him. 
What do you use your uh, liberty for? A cloak of maliciousness or to serve him? Hmm. Today, number two, people have the wrong idea about Christianity. Now, I will say this. Uh, us independent fundamental men of Baptists, we have it a little more right than the rest of them. But, uh, but, but, but it's not all about personal blessing and prosperity brought on by your tremendous praise and worship, okay? Uh, uh, it's about serving the Savior with your life. These people in these churches nowadays, uh, they think that, the, uh, you know, they go in and they get their praise and worship on so that their weak can be blessed. And that's not how it works. You and I know that, right? But that's where uh, Christianity has came to in America today. They go to, they don't even, uh, you know, I watch some of, some of my own family members too, man, be posting on Facebook, oh, what a great uh, day we had in church today, we're praising and worshiping. They ain't going to say nothing about no preaching. Praising and worshiping. It's not all about praise and worship. There's way more to serving God than praise and worship. <laughs> some of y'all know what I'm talking about because y'all serve God. Amen. Romans 12. Chapter 1, I beseech ye there, or uh, chapter, uh, verse 1, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. What? Reasonable service. In other words, that, that's, that's the least you can do, man. I mean, any of y'all ever studied Roman crucifixion? Me and Larry was getting talking about this a, about a week or so ago. So a couple of these knuckleheads were going back and forth whether the nail went in the palm or went in the wrist. Study Roman crucifixion. It'll tell you. Okay? But if you study that crucifixion, man, that was a horrible death. And if you specifically study the crucifixion of Jesus, man, it'll bring tears to your eyes. And he did that to, for you and I. And after all, since he died for us, the least you can do is live for him and serve him with your life. Now... God is merciful, but think about it. Why should he save you and redeem you and make you free if you're not willing to serve him? We better be glad God ain't a man. <laughs> you know that's my, our attitude. Why should I do anything for you if you couldn't even, you know, right? Well, well, praise the Lord, your salvation is by grace through faith and ain't got nothing to do with service because some of us be out of there. Some of us would be out of there. Oh, are you kidding me? All you did was come and sit in that chair right there. No, you can't turn around and get back out. <laughs> but praise the Lord, he is merciful. By grace through faith, and that not of works. It is the gift of God, right? Yeah. But you know, you ought to take that into consideration and show that in your service. In verses 22 and 23, that's the reason I kind of wanted to read to, uh, through 22 and 23. Uh, I, I, I'm just going to read 23 for the sake of time. Notice he said, and I will put a division between my people. God, This is God talking about. I will put a division between my people and thy people. Talking to Pharaoh. Tomorrow shall this sign be. For those of you that don't know, and this is a Sunday night crowd ought to know, uh, Egypt in the Bible uh, is a picture of sin and the world, okay? And I, I notice how God says he will put a division between them people of Egypt and my people Israel. Because in order to, uh, to serve God effect effectively, there has to be some sort of separation from the world. There has to be. You're not going to effectively serve God if you're tied to and conformed to the world. And the rest of that, or part two of, uh, of Romans 12, 1 and 2, and be, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You, you can't serve God right if you're still tied up in sin in the world. You know, the whole reason that Israel uh, wandered the wilderness for 40 years was because essentially God took them out of Egypt, right? But they still had too much of Egypt left in them. And, you know, the same thing really 
is some of us, some of our problem. It's our problem. You know, we have a hard time getting the sin out of us, so we spend much of our Christian life in a spiritual wilderness, just wandering. Right? No blessing, uh, no service, uh, uh, no, no, no nothing. Just wandering in a spiritual wilderness, going through the motions, coming to church, yay, brother, hey, sister, but not doing it, not going nowhere really, just spinning your wheel. Because there's no separation there. And, and you know, that, uh, they used to have a, a saying, well, you can take the homeboy out the hood, but you can't take the hood out the homeboy. <laughs> that false. I, I'm a perfect example of that being false, okay? And some of you have become too comfortable with, with, with who you are, who, who you have become, right? You say, oh, that, that's just me, man. You know me. That's just me. No, no, that, uh uh-uh. uh. No, I, yeah, I know you, and you need to change. That's why you are where you are right now, because you have not renewed your mind. You're still doing the same thing you was doing before you got saved, and it ought not be. Ah, uh, you know me, you know me. No, no, what you have done is you have created this God in your head that's okay with old me and, and my sin. And that's a false idol. That's a, God. that's a false God. By the renewing of your mind. Now, I know it's a process, okay? It doesn't happen overnight. But if you apply this book to your life and you live this book and you get tied up in the service of God, your mind will change. And uh, I, I, I preached a, a message in the B service this morning, and, uh, and um, the, the, uh, one of the, the words that was used in uh, this particular verse, um, it was talking about the renewing of the mind, and that word, I can't remember what the word was in Greek now, I have it written down somewhere in the back of the Bible, but it means heart, mind, and soul all together. So when you're so when, when, when you're renewing your mind, effectively all three of those things are being renewed at the same time, your heart, mind, and soul. <laughs> at the same time. And, and, and so really there can't be any service without the separation because without the separation, the sin and the things of the world keep drawing you out of God's service, drawing you away from church, drawing you away from the... You know, there's people in here that used to serve in certain ministries and now they're not anymore. There's people in here that used to go soul winning and now they're not anymore. We were having dinner with some folks the other night, and they were, th- we were, they were talking about, who's that one kid? Remember, he was a heck of a soul winner. He, used to, he helped us move. Remember, what was his name? What was his name? And we said his name, and, you know, he's not even in church anymore. Man, that dude led a Catholic priest to the Lord down here, St. Pius. <laughs> Talk about a soul winner, and now not even in church anymore. Because, the, look, was that, uh, uh, that, like that, I can't remember the name of that song, but that, that song that's in our hymnal that says, prone to leave the God we love. Uh, that's, that's us, man. We're, we're so easily led away by, by stuff, man. If we don't stay focused on God and focused on the things of God and focused on serving God, man, we're going to be just easily led away. There's, you know, there's, there's way more joy and blessing in serving God than there is in, in the things of the world. Because the things of God are eternal. The things of the world always leave you high, dry, and empty. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> and, and, and the things of God that are eternal, serving God, man, the, 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 the things that... Uh, that, that we're doing here uh, in, in this church and the many different ministries in this church, they're eternal. Uh, guys, you guys pick people up and bring them and they get saved, and that, that's, that's eternal. Those are crowns, man. That's going to last throughout eternity. The folks y'all cook for, that's gonna, those, those are things that's going to last for eternity. Whatever you do for service for the Lord Jesus Christ, that's going to last for eternity. But that bottle only lasts till the, till the last drop. <laughs> you know what I mean? That, that, them, the things of the world, they, 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 they only last till they're gone, and they're, they're gone pretty quick. That's why you always need more. But G, in Jesus, baby, he's our all in all. Amen? Amen. What's, what, what, uh, here for my Sunday school class, what's the theme of Colossians? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Our all-sufficient Christ. Come up, man. I'm, I quit. <laughs> Roy, you want to teach Sunday school? No. <laughs> Our 
Jeez, man. I'm going to give y'all one more chance. Look, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm almost done, and we're going to get out of here. Sadly, uh, many people have taken what God has given them to serve Him with and use those blessings and those gifts and those talents to live life for themselves or to make a dollar. Or to, look, uh, great examples all over the music industry, okay? Beyonce started singing in a church choir, okay? Uh, there's people uh, all uh, across the spectrum uh, that have won Grammys and such who got their start in a church choir, okay? Look at Johnny Cash. Johnny, got, Johnny Cash started in, in a church playing church uh, guitar in a church choir, okay? Uh, <laughs> I mean, and then look where they are. Well, look where they ended up. They took what God gave them to serve Him with, and they started using it, uh, uh, probably influenced by the wrong crowd, and then started using it. Slow, we didn't, didn't take nothing but the power of a dollar to draw them away from serving God. And then now look at them. What a sad commentary for the life of any believer. Whatever it is that God has given you, whatever talent it is that He has given you, invest that in service to the Lord. Okay, because if you don't, if you use it to get rich, or you use it for your own joy, or you use it for the wrong reason, the, the, the consequences are, are going to be bad. If you use it for serving the Lord, the consequences are eternal. What, what, a good question to ask yourself is, what is your life wrapped up in? Is your life wrapped up in self or is your life wrapped up in service? You, 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 you know me, uh, a, 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 a great uh, thing that has, uh, my wife and I have uh, been said to each other here recently is, uh, man, I, I can't, I don't have time, I'm at the church too much. And, but that's a good thing. That's a good thing, right? We just, we, 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 it's just weird the way that comes out, but that's a good thing. It's good to not have time for this because we're at church. It's good to not have too much, uh, I'm, I don't have enough time because I'm at church. We're not saying we don't have enough time because, uh, you know, I'm doing my thing or I don't have enough time because I'm, you know, doing, doing, uh, serving the devil or, I'm doing, you know, doing this or doing that. No, uh, we don't have the time because we're serving God. Uh, if you don't have enough time to do anything else because you're serving God, that's a good thing. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. What is, what is your great desire in life? Do, do you have any desire? <laughs> you know, that's what's wrong with our kids nowadays. They ain't got no drive. They ain't got no oomph. They ain't got no, uh, 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 no want to do anything except for, for this. That's, that's all they want to do. I mean, man, when I was a kid, you couldn't keep me in the house. I was out, pew, out of there on a bike. Now you ain't seen no crackheads on bikes. You don't see no kids on bikes. <laughs> you don't see no kids on bikes anymore. <laughs> you don't. But all our, our kids, they have no drive. They have no purpose. They have, what do you want to be? What do you want to do with your life? You, you don't know, you don't have like no idea, like you don't want to be a cop or a, a, a army or, you know, nothing. Mm -hmm. Man, no desire. Do you have any desire? What is your desire in life? In 2013, at, right there at the corner of that altar, I had a desire in my heart that has never left, and that's to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I continue... Uh, in that desire and will continue in that desire for the rest of my life. That is my great desire in life is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I won't let nothing stop it. And you ought to get you a desire. You ought to get you a desire and, and, and get, 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 just gear your life around that desire. And you know what? Church is a great place to start at. All right, Get you a ministry in your church, in this church, 
and make that your desire and your purpose and go all out, full speed ahead for it. By the way, you notice the tabernacle when Moses gave uh, 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 the instructions uh, for the tabernacle. I don't know if you, man, I should have gave you a picture to put up there, John. But if you've ever seen uh, a picture of the tabernacle and the way it was set up, uh, uh, by the way, it's in the shape of a cross. Uh, uh, the, the God, um, God gave Moses the instructions to build this tabernacle. And he said, I want a certain amount of tribes over here, a certain amount of tribes on the east and the west, and a certain amount of tribes up in the, in the north and then in the south. I, I need, uh, uh, I think there was three tribes. or there's, there's more. So it makes a cross, right? But all the children of Israel were encamped around the house of God. And that's a beautiful picture of how our life ought to be uh, encamped around God's house and serving God and doing the things of God. But most of us, our life is wrapped around ourselves. And we just, like preacher says, chunk God a bone. God deserves here. I think that's the last one. God deserves. And by the way, is God just a weekend gig to you? No, he, he shouldn't be. I, I, I mean, I mean, is he, is he just something you do once a week so you can feel spiritual about yourself? You go on Facebook, that's all you see. Oh, I went to service today, and then uh, 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 by Tuesday morning, they done posted something vulgar. No, you're, 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 your life ought to be wrapped around God, man. He ought to be the pivot point in your life. God deserves to be served. And if you love Him like you say you do, then serving Him will not be grievous. It will not be hard. It will not be, man, I just can't get, I just can't get, well, you won't have, I don't know about you, but, man, I, look, I, I, I come from a rough past, man, and, and when, when I fell in love with Jesus Christ, it was not hard at all to start serving Him, okay? I, yeah, there were some things I struggled with, and yeah, there's still some things I struggle with, okay? But, uh, 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 but, but I got no problem serving God. It is not grievous. It is not tedious. It is, it, it, as a matter of fact, I, it, I love to do it, all right? It's become, it, as I have made it my life, serving God. And, and, and so, so, so should you. And I know this is Sunday night, so most of us have. But if you haven't, man, let me tell you, you're missing out. <laughs> you're missing out. And, and I'm not saying this because you shouldn't go into the serving God expecting to get something out of it, Okay. But I'm telling you right now, you're missing out on the biggest blessing you'll ever see in serving God with your life, okay? Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven, and all else will be added. By the way, that verse says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. I'm preaching, I'm working on a message right now at the house. Everybody, everybody likes to seek the kingdom, right? But nobody wants to live out his righteousness in, in their life. They forget that part of the verses in there. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, and then all else will be added unto you. So, so build your life around the church. Get you a godly desire and purpose. Live a holy life, and, and all else will be added unto thee. Amen. You're going to find that by serving God, you will please Him. Without faith, it is impossible to please Him. You can only serve God by faith. Okay, and you're going to find that by pleasing God, you will find true meaning, purpose, and joy. I never knew, I never had a purpose for my life. I never really, uh, I, I, I never really had much joy. I, I really never did. If you knew me before I came to this church, I was a grump. I really didn't, I, I didn't want to be around. My wife probably said, you still are. But <laughs> I, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I wasn't a joy, I wasn't a pleasure to be around. Okay, I didn't like people. All right, and now God, God, God got a sense of humor because He said, "Look, I'm, 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 I'm going to take this fool and I'm going to put him in a purpose and, and give him a job where he has to love people." <laughs> so, yeah, last jokes on me, but uh, uh, you will find true joy in serving the Lord. There's joy in serving the Lord, man. I mean, look, I'm not saying every day I'm I'm just happy go lucky, but man, I, I end my day in joy. You know, I go through things throughout the day, and I mean, uh, you, you know, we all do, but, but at the end of the night, man, after I have prayed and read the Bible again, I, I, I you know, because that's what I do. I end the day with prayer and Bible, and I, I begin the day with prayer and Bible, and I end the day with prayer and Bible, and you should too. 
and, 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 and it just, I go to bed with joy. Because I really can't go to bed if, I'm not, if I don't have any joy, right? You're up all night, your, your mind's going 90 to nothing. But serving God will give you joy, man. Anyone who has ever lived a life of service to the Lord has never regretted it. Have, really, have you ever heard anybody say, man, I, I wish I would have done something with my life besides serving God? <laughs> have you ever heard that come out of anybody's mouth? No, and you never will either. Because there's no greater purpose than to serve God with your life. You've never heard nobody say, man, I wish I would have never got saved. Have you ever heard anybody say that? No, and you never will. But you'll often hear people say, man, I should have done more with my life. Man, I should have served the Lord. I should have got an earlier start at this. I'm one of those guys. I wish I would have uh, 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 never went the route I went. I wish I would have stayed in church when I was a boy. I wish I would have uh, started serving God as a, as, a, as a teenager like some of you have the opportunity to do. Don't let them key other free. Don't let them friends of yours pull you away from uh, from from serving God. I'm 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 about to be the first one to tell you there ain't nothing good in this world. You are where you're supposed to be tonight, and don't ever leave this place. Don't ever leave God. In, in Mark chapter uh, uh, ten, verse twenty nine, and uh, uh, through thirty one. Watch this. Verse 29 to 31. The Bible says, uh, And Jesus answered and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, There is no man that hath left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brethren and sisters and mothers, and children and lands and pers- with persecutions and in the world to, to come eternal life. But many that are first shall be last and the last first. Man, the, there will be great reward for a life of service both in this world and in eternity. But the greatest reward really is eternity. And look, I'll, I'll tell you, that, that verse, I had to show my wife that verse because... When we came here to San Antonio, our purpose was to get a job and go home to Fort Worth because that's where our family was. That's where our kids were. And then, uh, 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 would you, you know, God had his way, and God revealed to us that our purpose and our place was here. And, my, you know, the, y'all, y'all know a mother's heart. She would say, well, what about our kids? What about our kids? And I had to read that verse to her a couple of times and tell her, baby, God's purpose, God's going to give us an eternity with our kids. We're going to make sure that all of them are saved and we're in eternity with all of them. But right now, we need to serve God. And if it's here in San Antonio, then that's where we got to stay. Serving God is the most important thing in your life. I'm not telling you to leave your kids and go serve God. I'm just saying, if you got them, take them with you. (laughs) But... But you're not going to regret giving up anything to serve God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you for all that you do for us. Thank you for your word that you've given us to, uh, as a great example.